www.copperdog.com Welcome to another FC1 video tutorial. This is a series of videos detailing modifications and maintenance performed on my 2007 Yamaha FZ1. I'm Patrick, and thanks for joining in. FZ1 video tutorial. Brakes part two. Looking good. All right, we've got the brake line on. Got all the connections tight, we're ready to add the fluid. Before we do this, let's talk about bleeding the system and what happens and how this works. Um, we're gonna put fluid in at the top and we need to get it all the way through all these lines into all the T connections, eventually down into the calipers and into the pistons. Uh, to do this um, requires that we pump the handle, begin the process, and have someone at the bottom opening and closing the bleed valve in concert with this so that we can actually get the fluid to come down. Or the second way, the easy way, is buy one of these uh, pumps that goes at the bottom. It'll actually pull the fluid all the way through and then you just have to do a little bleeding at the end. Another way to do it, one way I'm gonna do it, is I've got a simple spray head that I've got from a household cleaner bottle like this and I've attached it to our hose. And I'm gonna put this on those bleeder valves and I should be able to put the fluid in and pump this and draw the fluid down that way. Then once we've got fluid in all the lines, we're just gonna bleed the system like normal. So let's get started on that. Fresh fluid is added to the reservoir, and from this point forward, it needs to be checked often as we pull the fluid down through the lines and into the calipers. If the reservoir goes dry during this process, you will introduce air into the system, and that's not what we're trying to do, so just keep an eye on it. Okay, this first bit is as easy as it gets. With the bleeder valve open about a quarter turn, from the time I started pumping the handle right here, So the time the brake fluid showed up at the bleeder valve right here only took 33 seconds and the brake line is primed. Now at this point, remove the hose, close the bleeder valve and repeat the process for the other caliper. Also, be sure to check the reservoir and add fluid as necessary. All right, this next bit is where it could help to have an extra set of hands, but a length of double-sided Velcro will work. The brake lever is pumped five to 10 times and then at the end of the last pump, held tight with the Velcro throughout the following step. Place the wrench over the bleed valve, followed by the drain line. Then a quick opening and closing of the bleeder valve expels the aerated fluid that has been forced to the calipers by the pumping of the lever. Now we're just gonna repeat the process. Pump the lever, lock it down, open and then close the bleeder valve. And again, pump the lever, lock it down, then open and close. Now in total, I found that after priming the brake lines with the hand pump, it took about five rounds of this bleeding cycle to get the system free of all the air. This process is repeated on both front calipers alternately until the fluid is solid with no bubbles. When completed, make sure all the lines and connections are tight with no leaks. The reservoir can now be fully topped off and the cap and liners reinstalled. Okay, that takes care of the front brake system. We've put on the new lines, the new pads, and put in fresh fluid, and we've bled the system completely. There's no air in the lines. The lever feels really good. Can't wait to get that on the road. The uh, back is gonna be done exactly the same. So we're just going to do the whole process over again. The only difference is, is on the back, I'm not replacing the pads. I'm gonna use the old ones because there's no wear on them really. So I'm gonna keep those. But other than that, it's all the same stuff. The rear brake system is laid out horizontally, so when you open the bleeder valve, it will not easily drain out like the front. However, a few quick stabs of the rear brake pedal will quickly expel the fluid from the reservoir. Begin by removing the brake line at the rear caliper. Next, unbolt the metal hanger that fits under the rear hugger and then remove it from the stock brake line. Finally, pry open the plastic support bracket and remove the brake line from the rear master cylinder. The brake line can be removed from the swing arm. Now the caliper can be unbolted from its positioning bracket on the rear axle. 
the rear caliper is slightly different than the front in that the pin that retains the brake pads is threaded and screwed into the caliper base under a threaded cap that acts like a locking nut. Remove both the cap and the pin. Now I'm going to be keeping the rear brake pads so these are set aside for now. You'll need to press the rear caliper's single big piston back into its cylinder. This not only expels all the remaining fluid, but if you are installing new pads, allows for the extra width they may need. And like before, I'm going to go ahead and give all the parts a good cleaning and inspection. Okay, obviously I didn't have to take the uh, rear caliper off um, because I'm not changing the pads. So I could have just left it on and changed the line and uh, filled up the system and bled it and we'd be okay. But I wanted to take it apart and just look at it, look at the different pieces, you know, these little rubber seals. I wanted to make sure everything's in good working order. Um, just give it a basic check over. Plus I can clean it up. And so it's good for another two or three years because if it's made it four years and looks like this, um, I know I'm in good shape. So uh, again, I just took it apart so I can look at it and clean it and everything, but you don't have to. Anyway, everything looks good, so I'm just going to put it back together, and uh, we're ready to go. Okay, step one is to reinstall the rear wheel and caliper. Feed the new brake line into position. Position the rear banjo end of the brake line on the caliper and secure using the new hardware. Install the metal hanger around the new brake line and under the rear hugger. Secure the front of the brake line to the master cylinder, ensuring alignment and fit, then tighten. We need to feel the reservoir for the rear brakes, but this is located behind the panel on the right side of the bike, below the driver's seat. Getting to the reservoir from either side or the top is difficult, so I chose to unscrew it from its bracket and simply swing it out beside the subframe to allow easy access. Go ahead and add the fluid, and like before, keep an eye on the level as we bleed the system. With the bleeder valve open, install the drain line and start pumping. In this case, 19 seconds was all it took to get the brake fluid to the caliper. Remove the drain line and close the bleeder valve. Set the wrench into position, followed by the drain line, minus the pump and handle. Now, just as with the front brakes, begin by pumping the brake lever and holding, then open, and then quickly close the bleeder valve. Now, we're just going to repeat this procedure until the fluid in the line is solid with no bubbles. It took about five rounds of this bleeding cycle of pump, hold, open, and close to get the system free of all the air. Be sure to top off the fluid in the reservoir and remount it into position behind the side panel. Man, those levers feel pretty good. Okay, that concludes my video for the brake system overhaul parts one and two. Hope you enjoyed it. Now, if you do the brakes yourself, obviously check them out. Make sure everything's working properly and check for leaks often. Um, I've got a new video coming up real soon. It's going to be a radiator flush, spark plug change, oil change, and a few of the basic maintenance procedures. I think you're going to enjoy it. So if you haven't subscribed already, please do. I've got more in the works all the time, and we'll see you at the next one.